Hi, I'm Tim. Today we're going to talk about variable rate secrets your banker never told you about. Most Canadians recognize that the interest rate on mortgages can be either fixed or variable. Fixed rate mortgages are negotiated with a set interest rate and payment and the amortization decreases over time. Variable rate mortgages on the other hand feature an interest rate that will change over time such that the payment and or amortization must change as well. Generally the more conservative borrowers, those on a tight budget and first time home buyers will prefer the fixed rate. But variable rate is a really interesting option. Variable rate mortgages are quoted at a margin relative to prime. So the interest rate on a variable mortgage would be quoted as something like prime minus 0.5%. Figuring out your interest rate is just a straightforward calculation. If prime is 6% and the rate you're quoted is prime minus 0.5, well then your actual interest rate is 5.5%. Similarly, if prime rate changes, so too does the interest rate you pay. If prime drops to 5% in the same example, then the interest rate that you'd actually pay works out to 4.5%. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, that's where things get really interesting, which leads us to secret number one, the variable rate mortgage. Secret number one, variable rate mortgage is actually more than one product. Specifically, there's what's known as the adjustable rate mortgage or the true variable rate mortgage, and they're quite different. Underpinning secret number one is the fact that interest rate, payment, and amortization are mathematically related. Should one of those variables change, one or both of the others has to change as well. Of course, the most typical example is when prime rate changes, which changes your interest rate. That means that either the payment or the amortization must change, and therein lies the rub. In the case of the adjustable rate mortgage, the payments will change along with prime rate so that amortization continues to decrease over time, similar to a fixed rate mortgage. The true variable rate mortgage, on the other hand, the payments stay the same and the amortization changes along with changes in prime. So that as prime rate goes up, your amortization actually will increase. And similarly, as prime goes down, your amortization decreases as well. But there's a catch to that too, because there's a maximum limit to amortization. When that maximum limit is reached, your payment has to change as well. This is what's known as the trigger rate, specifically the interest rate at which the amortization is maxed out, causing a change to your payment. And the change to your payment can be quite dramatic. The interest rate on mortgages in Canada is normally quoted as compounding semi-annually. And therein lies the little half secret. Compounding semi-annually means that they actually calculate interest after six months and then again after 12 months. You end up paying interest on the first six months of interest. To look at a simple example, if you were quoted 10% interest compounding semi-annually, what this actually means is that you're being quoted 5% after six months and then 5% on top of the 5% for the remaining six months. This means that you pay more. In the case of 10%, it actually works out to 10 and a quarter. So even though you were quoted 10%, you're actually paying 10.25%. This leads us directly to secret number two, monthly compounding. Some variable rate mortgages are actually quoted as compounding monthly. This is similar to the semi-annual compounding, except that the interest is calculated every month. So your annual interest is divided by 12 and you're charged that at the end of each month. Works out to about 1.0083% after the first month and then the, that compounded every single month thereafter. Works out to almost half a percent uh, by the end of a year. I recently went through this conundrum with one of my borrowers where we had this exact same issue come up. We have one lender offer us an adjustable rate at prime minus 0.50 and then another lender offer us a variable rate at prime minus 0.51. Seemed like 0.51 was better. Worked out to at the time to 4.20% 
compounded semi-annually versus 4.19% compounded monthly. The equivalent annual rate worked out to 4.22% versus 4.27%. So even though the quoted rate was higher, it actually worked out to a lower equivalent rate. The difference in payments was 4,576.88 versus 4,591.28, a $15 per month savings over the lower rate. These lenders also had different prepayment privileges such that the savings by doing prepayments with the first lender would actually add up to quite a bit more than the second lender. We'll have more on this on another video. Historically, borrowers who have gone with variable rate have done better than those who have gone with fixed rate. However, this is not guaranteed and not always the case. We saw this in 2022 when prime rate increased quite rapidly such that those who had locked into a fixed rate are now doing much, much better. Regardless, one or the other could still make sense for you. Connect with your broker to find out which is best. Please like and subscribe to the video. Leave a comment below, especially if you have a question. Have a great day.